<sighs> well, it's time to say goodbye to the giant. It's done its work. It's produced a lot of tomatoes and it's grown extremely well in the house. But I need to make room down here for other plants and I'm growing tomatoes outside so this plant is no longer necessary. I know it may sound kind of mean chopping down a plant but it's just a plant and it was only designed to produce a little bit of fruit and to show you what can be done inside during the winter and I think I've done that. So I'm going to harvest the tomatoes in about a few days and it's going to be a great salad. Take a look at all the tomatoes this thing is putting out. This plant has put out a lot of tomatoes since it was planted. And here is a last and final view of what it's putting out. Up we go. It's like a beanstalk, isn't it? More tomatoes. It's kind of like Where's Waldo with the tomatoes. Okay, my arms are at the highest I can reach, so Hopefully you can see all of this. That is quite a few tomatoes for my indoor tomato plant. The full length of it is exactly 14 feet 1 inch. I took a tape measure and measured it. So that is the extent of what I can do indoors. It's been fun, but it's time to go Mr. Tomato. Say goodbye. Yes, this is exactly what it looks like. I'm gardening in my garage. And the reason I'm gardening in my garage, hi, look at you. <laughs> I got a big old hunking bucket of compost here and it's been raining for three days. So it's a consistency of sludge. Yeah, it's really attractive and it doesn't smell too good either. But smell doesn't matter to me because this is for soil and I'm not gonna be living in it. So what do I care? I'm going to be planting, oh, why am I yelling? I got a microphone. I'm sorry. Um, I'm going to be planting boxcar willy, I call him willy, into a large pot, and also a pink ox heart. Doesn't look too good, but then again, neither would you if you were out in three days worth of thunderstorms and tornadoes being doused on, so it kind of swoops down like that. But it's okay. It's going to be just fine. Everybody's going to be happy once they're in their new home. All right, let's get started. For the soil, it doesn't really matter what you put in here as long as it's fertile. I managed to find Schultz, which I've never used before. Schultz Potting Mix on sale, two cubic feet for $6 and it was at Menards. And I don't know if you have a Menards near you, but it was on sale. So I bought a whole bunch of these because you can't beat the price. Now I'm going to... <laughs> Good thing I have a broom handy. <laughs> I am such a pig. Now the Schultz has just a little bit of fertilizer in it, but not nearly enough to support a tomato for any length of time. So I'm going to break up the clods. And then this is where it gets ugly. I'm going to put in this sludge that I lovingly call my compost. Ew. Oh, I saw a worm. Cool. Get in there. My compost is getting more and more, ooh, sticks, uh, more and more loaded with worms. And I guess I should wear gloves for this, but yeah. Okay. And here is Boxcar Willie. Set the tag aside. Now, this is gonna be planted deep so that I can bury some of the stems as it goes. So what I'm going to do is push some of the soil off to the side. I mixed in a good amount of compost because the Schultz potting mix doesn't really have a lot of stuff in it. It's basically just filler and that's fine with me. I throw in some of my compost to give it a good solid boost of incredible natural goodness. And then I'm going to water it with compost tea and I should have a lot of success. Where the heck did I put that knife? Ah, oh, there it is. <laughs> I'm such a guru. I really know what I'm doing. I can't even find my darn knife. Okay, now everything that's going to be underneath the soil, I've said it once, I'll keep saying it. Everything that's going to be underneath the soil as far as leaf stems and stuff have to go. I know it sucks when you start tearing these things off. You're like, oh no, I don't want to tear them off. Well, 
they will rot underneath the soil and you will regret it later. I didn't learn this in a book. I learned this from experience. Some people quote me so many things that they read off of books. And I, I guess I should appreciate that. But everything I know, I've learned from experience. I didn't learn it in a book. I didn't Google it on the internet. And uh, if you don't know what you're doing, I'm all for finding the information that you need. But the stuff that I teach you, I didn't read off of anything. I learned it myself. So I'm not teaching you the definitive way. I'm teaching you my way. So if it doesn't jibe with what you've seen done online, that's unfortunate, but that's just how I do things. Okay, we tossed it in there, put some loose soil around it. Okay, maybe a little bit more compost. A little bit more, a little bit more. Let me get this. Scary bag of potting soil, mix it in with the compost, and just keep doing that until it's as deep as you want it. I'm going to bury this right about up to here. It's going to look like, okay, here's where it gets fun. Now, let's see. This part right here is going to be underground. Snip. I'm going to lay this sucker over. Put some soil here and don't push too hard, gently. Let's not be mean to our tomatoes. Be nice to your tomato and it'll be nice to you. Do the same thing to the sucker over here, gently. Lay it off to the side. What this is gonna do is spread this plant out and the stems are gonna put down roots going down this way, going down that way, and going down that way. If they're all grouped together, they'd be putting down roots going straight down, less root coverage, less nutrient uptake, less water uptake. If they're spread out like a fan, the roots are gonna go straight down. You have more root coverage. Common sense. Whoops. Snip that off. Snip that off. And snipping off these extra stems does not hurt a thing because when you put a plant into the ground, it generally goes through a little bit of shock and a little bit of shock is no big deal. That's just what happens when a plant goes into a new location and uh, it'll get over it really, really fast. What the shock is, is it'll slow down on growing a little bit for a minute and it'll take a breather. Uh, some of the leaves will wilt, but don't you worry, they perk right back up. A lot of people will panic when they transplant something and it wilts a little bit. That's perfectly okay. If it stays wilted for more than a week, then you might have a little bit of a problem with some root things or watering issues or plant issues or bug issues, who knows. But a temporary wilt, not a problem. I think that pretty much does it. Uh, we have one, two, three, four, five, six growing tips. This is gonna be an extremely bushy, tall, crazy, lanky looking thing, but it's going to be extremely healthy and extremely productive. I don't know if I'm going to stake this thing growing up or if I'm just going to let it go right off the edge and gently swoop down and trail along the ground and do what it wants to do. But whatever it wants to do, I'm going to keep you updated on this as we go for container gardening out on my porch. All right, I'm going to go do the other one just like this, but I don't think I need to film that. I'm going to give this one some water real quick and take it outside. Boxcar Willie is all ready to go.